had victory on the cross, that we need no longer be fearful of anything because you have come to save us and to set us free. We thank you, Lord, that we have a home in heaven. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have a plan and a purpose for our lives. And so, Father, as we just come before you this morning and we worship you, Good morning to the Salvation Army, Tuss and Ranch. We're glad that you're joining us this morning. We have a great time together serving an amazing God who loves us incredibly. Now, if you're on the chat box, we want you to chat and let us know you're online. We want you to say, hey, I'm here, present and accountable. And I want you also to let us know if there's prayer requests. If you and your family need prayer this morning, we want you to let us know because we want to pray for you. We believe that our God is a God that can do immeasurably more than you can ask or imagine. We believe in our God that He's a God that gives second chances. He loves you. He wants to give you a chance to become all that He created you to be. If you're watching us from our shelter this morning, a big hello, a big shout out to you as well. And we're looking forward to joining with you in worship soon when we can come together. God bless you. Let me pray with you right now. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. We thank you that you're a God that knows us intimately. You know our faults and you know our, our strengths. You know when we are sad and you know when we are happy. But this morning, God, I pray that every person watching us on this live stream 
will experience the power of God, the resurrected power of God, touch their lives. Father, where there's needs to be healing, whether it's physical, whether it's emotional, whether it's spiritual, let it be so. Father, where there needs to be hope and encouragement, let our folks know, God, that you are the anchor. You are the foundation. And when we stand upon you and your word, we cannot be shaken. And we hold on to you today, Lord, knowing that the best is yet to come for us. And we pray your blessing upon all who come under the authority of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, friends. We're glad you can join us in worship this morning. And if this is your first time joining in to our live stream, go to satrconnect.org, and that's where you just fill in some basic info. And uh, someone from the core, someone from our church ministry, will get in touch with you and answer any questions or pray for anything that you might have uh, going on in your life. Also, if you have uh, want to find out information on how to give your tithes and your offerings, any financial donations to the core and the church here, go to satrgiving.org. Our Sunday morning uh, outdoor worship services are continuing. Uh, they are at 10.30 out in our courtyard services. We have child care for, uh, for ages 1 through 6 and starting next Sunday for ages 7 through 13. And so if you have kids in that age range, bring them on out and let's all worship the Lord together. And now since we're in the Easter season, just a reminder that we have our Easter drive through uh, going on in our courtyard as well. That's going to be on March 27th from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Register to make sure that we have a space and enough supplies and materials for you and your family and your kids. Uh, but come on out and enjoy that wonderful time together on the 27th. All right, friends. Well, let's continue our worship this morning. Wherever you're at, our hope and our prayer, our encouragement to you is that you bless the name of the Lord Jesus in your cars, in your living rooms. I don't know where you are, but let's come together and worship together. All right, amen. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. The walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. 
every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise when the darkness closes in Lord still I will say blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your name blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Cause there's pain in the offering Blessed to be your name Every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise And when the darkness closes in Lord Till I will say Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give. You give and take away. You give and my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. God, you give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. the Lord, blessed be your name, yes, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Amen, amen. What do you guys think? What do you guys feel when you think about the Lord Jesus Christ as a part of your life? Let's sing. When I think about the Lord, how He saved me, how He raised me, how He filled me up with the Holy Ghost, how He healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord And how He picked me up And turned me around And set my feet On solid ground Yes, it makes me want to shout Hallelujah Thank you, Jesus Lord, you're worthy of all the glory all the honor, all the praise. Sing when I think about, when I think about the Lord. How He saved me, how He raised me, how He filled me up with the Holy Ghost, how He healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how He picked me up and turned me around and set my feet on 
solid ground. Come on. It makes me want to shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. It makes you want to shout. Makes you want to shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all the honor, all the honor, yes, all the praise. Come on. Thank you, Jesus, for your amazing love. That when we think about your amazing love and your presence in our lives, we cannot help but shout and declare and proclaim the name of Jesus, the name above all names. And so, Lord, may we not only shout with our voices, but may we shout out and proclaim with our lives that the love of Jesus is very real and has the power to transform and to change and to resurrect dead bodies back to life. And so, Jesus, not only do we want to shout and proclaim as individuals, but we want to shout and proclaim as a body of believers, a body of lives that have been transformed by the name of Jesus. And so in this Easter season that is all about death to life, that is about resurrection power, Lord, infuse us, Lord, with that very same power that emptied a tomb centuries ago. This is what we want to think about, Lord Jesus. We want to think about you. We want to think about your mastery and victory over death. And let those thoughts bring about transformation and change in our lives, Lord Jesus. So we want to shout. It makes me want to shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy. Of all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Sing it again. Shout it out. Thank you, want to shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Yes, Lord. And so from wherever we are at, Lord Jesus, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. All the glory, honor, and praise belong to you, Jesus. And it is in that name we proclaim. It is in that name we sing and praise. It is in that name we pray. Amen. Most people in the world are focused on having a good life. I don't think anyone really wants to live a life that isn't good. I mean, who wants to live a bad or terrible life? So what do you think of when I say the good life? Well, in the dictionary, when you look up the good life, it says this. If you say someone is living the good life, you mean that they are living in comfort and luxury with few problems or worries. You see, the good life is a philosophical phrase for the life that someone would like to live. There have been songs and movies and television shows all about the good life. It conjures up ideas of a life of ease, fishing, uh, swimming, playing golf or reading a book. For some people, it means living a life of expense, luxury yachts, Caribbean beaches, mountaintop chalets, hot tubs and spas and servants. For still others, it conjures up image of extreme living, bungee jumping, snowboarding out of helicopters or wild parties. When Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence, he listed life liberty and the pursuit of happiness among the unalienable rights that God gave people. For many today, that pursuit of, of the Jeffersonian ideal means primarily chasing after objects of self-gratification, such as money, houses, 
cars, vacations, the best seats at sporting and entertainment events, and health and fitness. Sometimes this pursuit includes things like promiscuous sex, uh, frequent alcohol consumption, and the unfettered use of so-called recreational drugs like marijuana, crack cocaine, and ecstasy. The sad reality is that such things are merely a temporary rush that falls far short of the genuine good life that really satisfies. So what is that good life that God intended for us? What does a life that will satisfy us eternally look like? As we return to the book of 1 Peter this morning, we see Peter addressing this subject of living the good life in uh, chapters 3, verses 8 through 12. You see, Peter recognized that believers are not exempt from serious difficulties and suffering that could potentially rob them of a life of joy. But still, in spite of all the struggles and suffering, Peter shares how a believer can live and love the good life. These five verses help us to learn how to love life and see good days even in the midst of challenging circumstances. Well, hasn't it been a year full of challenging circumstances? And what does Peter have to say to us today? Well, the first thing he says to us is, treat others rightly. Peter begins this ch- section in chapter 3 and at, at verse 8 when he says this. He says, Finally, all of you should be of one mind. Sympathize with each other. Love each other as brothers and sisters. Be tender-hearted and keep a humble attitude. Don't repay evil for evil. In- uh, don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, Pay them back with a blessing. That is what God has called you to do, and he will grant you his blessing. Peter begins with the word finally, but this finally doesn't signal the end of the letter. It's just the conclusion of the current section. This section began in chapter 2, and Peter had been addressing how a Christian should behave or live in an ungodly and hostile world. After addressing relationships with civil authorities, workplace relationships, and relationships in the home, now Peter addresses how to generally treat others in a right way. And he broke up this idea of treating others rightly into several characteristics. As Peter listed these things that enhance relationships, he began with a command to be like-minded. And this word literally means same thing. In order to live in harmony with others, we must begin with a common commitment to God's truth that leads to a unity in thought. The mind we want to have is the mind of Jesus We should want to think like he thought. And when we do, we experience a greater harmony with God's people. The next thing that Peter suggested was that we should be sympathetic. This is a similar command to be compassionate that's mentioned later in the verse. To be sympathetic means to feel for and with others. To be compassionate includes a sense of mercy and understanding towards others. We not only feel with them, but we are moved to act for them. In this list of how to treat others right, Peter also included that we should love one another. And Peter used the Greek word philadelphoi, which is the word for brotherly love. This is a friendship kind of love that has to do with close relationships. And last on Peter's list of treating other people rightly is humility. There's no place for arrogance and pride in our relationships. If we don't have the right kind of humility, we will struggle to be sympathetic and compassionate. Our sense of humility should come from our relationship with God, which should definitely keep us humble. I like the saying, the ground is level at the foot of the cross. We're all equal to each other in relation to God. We need to be humble. And after Peter's short short list 
of treating other people rightly and, and having this godly kind of relationship. He also made it clear that we need not seek revenge or retaliation. That includes actions and words. When others harm us with insults or even evil actions, we must not do the same in return. Rather, with God's help, we should repay evil with blessing. Peter already pointed back, pointed out back in chapter 2 and verse 23 that Jesus is a great example of this. When someone is unkind, we are kind. When someone takes, we give. We bless others in all circumstances. So in order to experience the good life, we must learn to treat others rightly. The second thing that Peter tells us is to guard your tongue. Peter continues and he says this, For the scriptures say, if you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Many of the problems of life are caused by the wrong words spoken with the wrong spirit. Peter reminds us that we need to keep our tongues from evil. And what he is suggesting is that we should not let any unwholesome and ungodly speech come out of our mouths. It also means that we should not allow our tongues to be used to harm others and tear them down. Peter specifically mentions that we should not tell lies. We should tell the truth. All lies should be far from us. When we open our mouths and allow our tongues to speak, what comes out should be filled with grace and goodness. And when we tell someone something, they should be able to take us at our word. If we keep our tongues from evil, then we will be living the good life and we will see good days. The third thing that Peter tells us in this section here is that we should turn from evil and do good. In verse 11, Peter says this, he says, turn away from evil and do good. That which is good and virtuous is the opposite of that which is evil. We must have nothing to do with that which is evil and everything to do with that which is good. This is so foreign to the contemporary notion of the good life as doing one's own thing. For, the lo for a long time, the motto ha has been, if it feels good, do it. But that is often at the expense of what is really good and what is really God's will. We live in a time when so much that is evil has become so accepted. We've become desensitized to all kinds of evil. And so Peter's call is to be aware of all those things that call themselves entertainment. Music, television, movies, internet websites, all promoting evil, ungodly lifestyles. Think of the way that greed and selfishness has taken over, drunkenness, drug abuse. Look at the way that lotteries and gamblings are on the increase. These are all evils of our time. There seems to be no end to the evil that is being reclassified as good and acceptable. But God tells us very clearly in his word what is acceptable and how we should live life. If we want to live the good life, then we must turn away from evil and do good. And finally, Peter says to us, seek peace and pursue it. His final command is this, search for peace and work to maintain it. In other translations, this verse is translated as seek peace and pursue it. This verse uses words that express an intensity and an aggressiveness of actions. We are to seek peace and hunt for it aggressively, even peace with our, our enemies and our persecutors. Christians are called to be known in this world as peacemakers. 
Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. In James, we read this, Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. And I love what Paul wrote about peace in Romans 12 and verse 18. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. You see, peace begins with you and me. What a difference would it make in our homes if we were to seek peace and pursue it? What a difference would it make in our schools and our neighbourhoods if we were to seek peace and pursue it? What a difference would it make in our church family if we were to seek peace and pursue it? Peace is not something we can generate on our own. We first of all must be at peace with God through Jesus. Romans 5 says this, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Once we have peace with God, then we can allow the Holy Spirit to work in us to produce the fruit of the Spirit, which includes peace. Galatians 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If we want to experience the good life, then we must seek peace and pursue it. And let's look at this last verse from our scripture uh, passage today. Verse 12. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. You see, Peter helps us to see what it is that ought to motivate us to live the good life that pleases God. We are reminded that God is a sovereign God who sees all and knows all. He's a God who holds people accountable for their behavior. But for Peter, the primary issue here is not judgment, but God's gracious care for his people. The Lord's eyes are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayers. How wonderful is that, that God's eye is on you and his ear is listening and and understanding your prayers. God knows what's going on in our lives and he's ready to supply all of our needs. And God is so pleased with us when we live the good life and he supplies all all that we need to be faithful to him. And so Peter gave us some really helpful advice and guidance for living the good life. He said, treat others rightly. He said, guard your tongue. He said, turn from evil and do good. And finally, he said, seek peace and pursue it. I want to encourage you this morning to look over those things that Peter have called us to and decide on something that you really need to be working on today. And then I want you to pray. And I want you to ask God to help you overcome the challenges that you are facing. You see, God wants us to have a good life. But so much more than that, he wants us to have a great life. His word tells us that Jesus came to give us life, but not to just give us life, to give us life in abundance. And this good life that Peter is talking about is this life of abundance that God wants for you and for me. You see, God wants us to live in relationship with him. And because he loves us, he wants us to experience his love. But then he wants us to share his love with others. And this is the good life that Peter's talking about. And if you don't know or you're not experiencing the good life this morning, then you should be encouraged because God's eyes are on you. And he is listening to you. So if you are struggling, if you are filled with cares and burdens, if the things that you are experiencing aren't satisfying you, then I want to encourage you this morning to stop and to cry out to God and say, God, help me live the good life, the life that you intended for me. Lord, bless me. 
Lord, help me to be a peacemaker. Lord, help me in my relationship with others, Lord. Help me, Lord, to be someone who is filled with love and who treats people rightly. And God, help me guard my tongue. Lord, help me to be somebody who speaks truth and kindness and encouragement. Lord, Lord, help me stop trying to tear people down. And Lord, help me turn away from those things, those, those things that aren't good. Lord, help me to, to turn away from them and start living as you intended. And God promises us that he will hear our prayers and he will help us. Do you want to live the good life? Then ask God to help you this morning. God, our Heavenly Father, we pray, Lord. We pray, Lord, and thank you for the gift of Jesus because it is because of Jesus that we are able to live the life that you want for us. God, with all the things that are challenging and difficult, with all of the circumstances that are overwhelming, Lord. Lord, help us to know that you are still in control, that you still have a plan and a purpose for us. And Lord, when things just seem to be out of control and, and nothing is making us feel good anymore, then Lord, help us find you. Lord, help us stop and just cry out to you. Lord, I just pray right now, Lord, that you will give us strength, you will give us courage, that you will give us boldness, Lord, to live differently, to live this life that you've called us to live. Lord, give us your Holy Spirit. Lord, empower us, Lord. Enable us, Lord, to be the people you have called us to be. And Heavenly Father, I just pray right now, Lord, that you will pour out your blessing on your people today. Lord, with the uncertainty of what's going on around us, Lord, help us to always seek what you want, Lord. And help us, Lord, to show others the way to you. And I pray this, Lord, in your Son's precious and holy name, Jesus. Amen. Oh, to know the power of your risen life And to know you in your sufferings To become like you in your death, my Lord So with you to live and never die Knowing you, Jesus, knowing you, there is no greater thing. You're my all, you're the best, you're my joy, my righteousness, and I love you, Lord, and I love you. Let's close with our choral benediction.